But the slavery in the Bible thing, this one, I mean, I know we like back in the Facebook days, I remember we would be in these uh, discussions, too, because the answer was always the same. Whenever you bring it up, you say, hey, you know about the slavery in the Bible? First thing people would say, well, it wasn't slavery. It was indentured servitude. Then you had to teach them what their own holy book says because they didn't know. And it's like, no, you know, it's a uh, it's indentured servitude. For those you don't know, the system of slavery in the Old Testament worked like this is that you were allowed to enslave uh, Hebrew males as indentured servants for seven years. Like say they had to pay back a debt or something, which is weird that it's always seven years, no matter what the debt is. I thought that was kind of odd. Like you'd think there'd be different lengths of time, but no. Levels. And uh, <laughs> you were allowed to enslave female uh, Hebrew slaves as long as you wanted. Like you, they were yours for life. And uh, you could enslave foreigners for life. And the foreigners, if they had kids, those kids were also your slaves. Now, your male slaves that you had indentured servants, you had to let them go in seven years unless they married a female slave, the one you own forever. And so he's been married to this lady for, you know, six or seven years. And then when it's time to go, you're like, oh, you want to stay with your family, do you? And he says, yeah, I do. Then you put a golden earring in and you own him for life, too. That's the system. Like, that is the system of slavery. And then when you explain, like, oh, well, you know, uh, God says to treat them like family. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's not there either. <laughs> it is. Uh, so that one is like what got me was not only the system of slavery that is set up is that that people just didn't know. They didn't bother to learn about it. And automatically, like you said, they automatically had excuses for it. Now, that didn't lead me away from Christianity. Ultimately, it was other stuff, too. But it. Yeah. I, I get annoyed when people are like vociferously arguing for something and haven't done the research on it. It kind of bothers me. But yeah, that's brought fact, that up. The fact that there's, you know, rules about how you can beat your slaves and yes. you know you can beat them as long as you don't kill them, you know, yeah. things like this. And it's like this doesn't sound like indentured servitude. And I also remember I remember growing up too, like, you know, when they would talk about putting the, the marking or the, the earring or whatever in your ear. And it was always used as like this beautiful example of like, you know, we're oh. you know that, that that we we're we're like you know uh, servants for Christ, and you know there we're 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 you're you're commanded to love your your masters, which also just is like a way to say and that's in the New you know, Testament. And that's, and that's in the New, New Testament. That's in exactly. The New Testament. <laughs> yeah, and so when people and then when people pull that, well, that was in the Old Testament. Jesus never said, "Hey, Bible 2.0, that other stuff." Yeah, that's not the case anymore. We're changing <laughs> yeah. that. He said, "I'm here to, to to fulfill the law, not to abolish it." So, yeah. Now, it, slavery was one of them. The concept of hell was another one um, that, that, that really I just always struggled with. I believed in it. I believed in a literal burning hell, but I just really struggled. And it was actually reading uh, some of Rob Bell's work. Uh, I don't know if you all are familiar with, Not familiar Rob with him. No. Um, he was he was a big deal back in maybe like 2010. Um, he had a series called Numa. Um, and they were uh, just short, really well done, well produced videos. But he basically he came out with a book called Velvet Elvis. That may that may sound familiar. Uh, that possibly. does, yeah. Velvet yeah. Elvis. He basically came out and said that he he didn't necessarily believe in hell. And and I remember reading that, and what he said, I so agreed with, is he said, you know, if if Christ died on the cross, you know, as a gift for everyone to save everyone from from hell. He has failed miserably because how many millions are going, still going to hell despite the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? Um, what Rob Bell proposed is he thought that the, the idea of Christ dying on the cross and literally saving everyone, whether they accepted him or not, was actually a more honorable and, and sacrificial gift. It was actually salvation that worked. And I was really like drawn to that idea. Um, now, I, you know, couldn't talk about it with any of my like family or friends because they, you know, <laughs> would have cast me out as a heresy. Um, but it was it was really Old Testament slavery, hell. Those were the things that were the red flags to me that I was never satisfied with the answers that I got um, that ultimately pulled me out of not just the movement, but but really church specifically. Yeah, yeah, I. I, I I hadn't read that book or anything, but I have heard about like the the concept of like Christ's um like unconditional atonement and everything. It, that it makes sense to me, honestly. Like it actually does. Like if, if 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 a human sacrifice is to actually save people from damnation, it would make more sense if it was everyone. But yeah, that's that's interesting. Wow. I hadn't, uh, Velvet Elvis sounds familiar. I, I but uh 
it's like a cartoon character or something it's weird but it's like uh, but sorry all right i don't know who's up next year i think it's you carla right you have the next question i think that question was already asked um it was the whole what what circumstances i guess led to you leaving the fundamental okay all right cool and I made oh, yeah, what's that I wouldn't even ask. So nah, it's all right. No, I don't <laughs> keep <cool>. talking. <laughs> That's about the journey. So, so yeah, so like the circumstances. So you said that um, it was a few things like the concept of hell and slavery and everything like that. How did that journey go? So like for mine, mine was essentially the catalyst was the finding out about the construction of the New Testament canon. That's really what kicked things off for me. Mm -hmm. How long did, because you said you jumped right, you jump right into atheism, which that's that's surprising. Like it took me like seven years to realize I was an atheist. I, I was still a deist for a long time. Like, what was your journey like? Um, well, and you're you're right. The uh, uh, some of the books that that I read, like misquoting, I really like Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman's uh, great. Mm -hmm. Misquoting Jesus and uh, how how Jesus became God. Jesus interrupted. I'm, I'm working on Jesus interrupted actually right now. Uh, I haven't finished that one yet. But um, there, there was one particular book. You know, as I was kind of asking these questions and kind of self-reflecting, and you know, really just kind of checking my own my own kind of spiritual pulse, um, there was a book called "Why I Became an Atheist" by John W. Loftus. Um, it's a pretty popular book. That, that that name pops up quite often, and that was like the first book that I actually had the guts to like read. You know, mm -hmm. where I'm like going into it like I'm disarming a bomb because. I, I know because John Loftus was a pastor and I think he may have actually been in the IFB. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going into this territory and I'm reading someone's account who may have a very similar background to me. And I realized going into that, that it could very well kind of tip the scale, so to speak. Um, I, yeah, I didn't, I never was a deist. Uh, I never was a deist. Uh, I was, I was a uh, independent fundamental Baptist Christian. Uh, and then was an atheist. Um, wow! I realized I I didn't believe it anymore. Now it didn't happen overnight. Uh, right. Matter of fact, I think like the I still vividly recall, um, you know, driving down the road and just bawling mm -hmm. and praying to God. The balls in your court, like I, I'm at a pivotal moment, and I'm still talking. Yeah. To God, so like clearly there's <laughs> somewhat so of a funny. belief there, right? Um, <laughs> And so, you know, it's like, you know, and I get asked this question, you know, from occasionally from my friends and my family, you know, what is it that would convince you to believe again? And my answer honestly just has to be, I don't really know. I can't really think of anything, but God should know. Yeah. Um, and if he wants me to know, then he has the ability to convince me. If, if the Apostle Paul could have a Damascus Road experience, then he's got no excuse to not do something like that, you know, for me. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the, uh, John W. Loftus was definitely a big influence. Why I became an atheist, um, and yeah, uh, once once I prayed those prayers to a God that I was slowly losing belief in, uh, and nothing happened, nothing changed, and so I said, "Well, I think that's it. You know, I think that's all." Um, wow. And so, yeah, uh, and that's that's the way it worked. Now, you mentioned something earlier, TJ, that kind of made me chuckle, and I can't remember exactly how you worded it, but it was. Um, it was the idea of uh, being mad at God versus like not believing in God. Yeah. Um, it, it, I talk to myself a lot. You wouldn't believe that the way I talk and talk in front of other people. <laughs> but um, there, there are times where, um, you know, okay, let me just, I'll just, I'll use a very personal example, but one that I don't mind sharing. Uh, my sister passed away about a year and a half ago. Um, she, she was uh, seven years younger than me. She was a devoted Christian. Um, she passed away seven days after giving birth to her first child. Mm. Um, her husband, they'd only been married for about a year and a half. Mm. Um, she went to mission fields. She, um, you know, dedicated her life to Christ. She went on so many missions trips, um, gave, gave, gave. She worked at her church like it was a full-time job. And she gave birth and passed away after, after having her first child. Um, there are times where I say, fuck god mm -hmm. there are times i'll just say that or think things like that because i'm angry i don't believe i don't believe i'm not convinced god exists yeah. but the god that i used to believe in and i'll even think on the off chance i'm wrong and there is one i'm okay saying this because it, yeah it, it does, it, it's it's a therapeutic thing 
Um, and so, uh, but that was something you mentioned that was kind of interesting where it's like, you know, being mad at God, but how do you be mad at God if you don't believe in God? I think it's actually possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the same as me being mad at Voldemort for what he did to Harry. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Screw Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, it's, uh, and like I said too, it's like, it's easy like if, if you haven't, uh, had that experience or something like that to, you know, actually have those feelings. Oh, oh no. Sorry. Can you, I may have, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. well, there we are. Oh, my back. Okay, cool. I thought. God, about that. God may have uh, <laughs> tried to, to smite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm here, bitch. <laughs> but, uh, oh no! No, but uh, no, but yeah, like you know, going through, like, you never know how you're going to react, and, and so I, I do understand that as well. Um, the concept of hell—that's that's an interesting one because that happened. That was one of your first problems, right? Because what I'm trying to think about here is that. If I put an example for me, when uh, when I first lost my faith in Christianity, I still believed like I had the look at the trees argument type of thing. I was like, OK, well, you know, why is there something other than nothing? It just kind of makes sense if something out there, some divine artificer, some prime mover put all this together. And I kind of went down there. I didn't believe in hell or anything, though, because every once every now and again, I'll still run across atheists who still have like this lingering fear of, sure. of hell. And yeah. also, too, uh, we didn't go over this, but even the concept of hell itself has just evolved so much over time that, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you actually like, go back to the uh, the origin of the Christian faith, they didn't have anywhere near the same concept of hell a lot it's is amazing but a lot of our concept of hell comes from dante's fucking inferno which is insane to think about that that book's only a few hundred years old but um it's it's kind of wild about that so did that really uh did that ever creep up on you or anything oh yeah for sure and actually i want to i want to pause real quick and say something sure um you know tj i've known you for a long time carla Kai, i i ju just met you of, an hour ago um i i I went through the journey and believed I, I, I was a genuine believer. My mother-in-law doesn't think so. She said you were never saved because it's yeah. impossible to be saved and lose your salvation. I understand that theology. Um, I, I say if I was say, if it was possible to be saved, I was because I, I truly believed And anyone who says I didn't, they're calling me a liar and that, that we're not going to get along well. But what uh -huh. I will say, regardless of whatever y'all's positions are, um, I, you know, I, I'll speak vehemently and, and sometimes with a little bit of passion myself. Uh, I lost a lot of Facebook friends or, or in the early days when I was like evangelizing atheism and I hated that I did it that way. I wished I could go back and do it differently. Um, but it, it's important that I, I don't want to offend if, you know, uh, I don't think y'all seem really cool when we met. And I don't think you'll be hurt if I say something that doesn't jive with you. But just wanted to, to mention uh, <laughs> that uh, I want to be respectful of other people's beliefs uh, if they don't align with mine. Um as far as the hell argument, it, it really was, um, you know, trying to reconcile an all loving God with with uh, eternal torment. Um, you know, I, I I grew up believing in, a, in 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 the fire and brimstone hell. I never had another concept of hell. That's mm -hmm. why maybe Rob Bell's idea was kind of attractive because I'm like, like that God makes more sense, like to be all loving. Um, you also hear, you know, of course, well, you know, you also have to be just. But there's no definition of justice for committing finite crimes <clears throat> that would require infinite torture. It, there's just no universe that would accept that. And, it, and you could even say, well, you know, God is different. Yeah, but we're not. And, and like yeah. he made us and established the rules if he exists. And I, I just, I, you know, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't come to terms with that. And, and as an atheist... Um, my grandfather, who also just passed away a couple months ago, uh, he was an evangelist, a uh, lovely man. Uh, I, I loved him dearly and respected the work that he did, even though I disagreed with it. Um, he would he was a letter writer. He would write letters and, and send them all the time. It's a lost art, and he would do it just as long as he could. And one of the last letters he sent me, uh, he, it was anonymous. He didn't put his name on it, but it was very clearly from my grandfather. There was no doubt about it. And, you know, he just in that letter was pleading and saying how heaven was not going to be as sweet if I wasn't there. And my grandfather at that time was was only about a year or so away from from death. And it, it, it crushed me. It broke my heart to know that other people 
were burdened and hurting because of something I just didn't believe. And so it's like more than just my own personal belief. It's also knowing that you're kind of sort of in a way responsible for how other people yeah. feel about you and are hurting. And I, I hate that. 